So this is a third week for the frequency response. Uh, we went through fundamental concepts like body plots. Also, we went through the high frequency models of the transistors and how we analyze these certain nodes for poles and zeros and cutoff frequency estimations uh, that will be continuing this week. Uh, but before we uh, continue with this week uh, with those concepts, uh, until slide 23, we can cover week nine and week 10. Week nine, we focused on the body plots, which is the question on uh, quiz question one, uh, how body is characterized. And also we learned Miller's theorem, which is the question two in your quiz. And uh, using the Miller's theorem uh, in the last slide of week nine, I explain how a coupled differential amplifier can be designed. Okay? Uh, in the week 10, uh, over the body characteristics, we went through the low frequency and high frequency dominant pole estimation. And we also learned the direct calculation of those low frequency and high frequency poles. And uh, last thing we learned was short circuits, time constant estimation. Uh, so I will go briefly over those uh, stuff we learned in the last two weeks. So this is a, for instance, simple RC circuits. And this RC circuit in frequency domain, X axis being frequency, has a characteristic voltage out divided by voltage in. This is called transfer characteristics, okay, HS. So the characteristics is at low frequency, this voltage is equal to this input. Why? Because at low frequency, this cap is not even there. At here, this cap is open. Why? Because one over SC or one over J omega C, same thing. At low frequency, this is what? Infinite, basically open impedance, right? And open impedance means this node is equal to this node because there is no current flowing. This voltage on top is zero. However, if we increase the frequency higher, what is happening is this cap starts to come into effect, right? And this cap is basically the impedance getting smaller and smaller and eventually at very high frequency when omega is big this becomes zero it becomes a short circuit that means the voltage on the cap or v out becomes zero so this basically becomes zero minus db okay this is db right so uh, or actually this is not db this is decimal so one basically zero comes to here it becomes zero it's infinite frequency so if you draw the characteristic using the Laplace, you already know this. The impedance is one over CS. The total impedance is one over CS plus R1. And this is the characteristic. And if you draw this characteristic, the magnitude of this, this is real, this is imaginary. Real square plus imaginary square, square root gives you the magnitude. This is the magnitude of the frequency response. And as you can see, when omega is zero, denominator is one, 1 over 1 is 1. And as you can see, when omega is infinite, this dominates, becomes infinite. 1 over infinite becomes 0. Okay? So this is transfer characteristics. If you look at it time domain, then the time domain is basically this cap is charging through this voltage, right? And you can write the time characteristics, time domain characteristics, as this V0 times 1 minus exponential T over RC. When T is 0, this exponential is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, so the cap voltage is 0. When T is infinity, this exponential is 0. 1 minus is, uh, 0 is 1. V0 times 1, V0. Okay, So basically, you come to here, charge. And how fast is charging defined by RC? If RC is small, that means it requires less time to charge. If RC goes high, this means RC goes high arrow-wise, then it takes much more time to charge the circuits. Okay? But if RC is small, it takes so fast to charge the circuit. So as you can see, this is frequency domain, this is time domain, and the relationship is actually simple. If RC is small, the circuit charges super fast. Basically, it's a faster circuit. And also in frequency domain, it has a wider bandwidth, right, compared to the other one. So small RC is good for the performance. You increase your frequency bandwidth, right, where your gain is constant, and you also charge your circuit fast. That means you have a faster computer, you have a faster microprocessor, you have a faster camera, you have a faster cell phone. 
right? Because everything is transistors inside those electronics. And actually that cap, the C cap, it forms a node, right? That cap becomes open circuit, that cap becomes short circuit with different frequencies. And in the middle, it has a frequency. The frequency where one over RC, for instance, in this case, this node, the cap is CL, right? And the equivalent cap at this node, what you do to find the equivalent cap, you close this cap and you look at the rest of the circuits from the cap. Basically, I I make cap myself and from the window, I'm looking rest of the circuit, okay? And you find that resistance direct method. It's like R20. And this is actually this RD parallel. There is a RO here, which is big. So I ignored it. So RD parallel RO. And because RO let's assume it's infinite in this case, ideal, this becomes equivalent resistance becomes RD. So that equivalent resistance times that cap gives you something called pole. The pole means where you are losing your gain. And here, for instance, this is just like a simple circuit and you are losing the gain. Uh, actually, okay. So you are losing the gain at this point by 3 dB. 3 dB means one over square root two in terms of gain, okay? Uh, any questions so far? No, okay. And um, am I recording? Can you guys see the recording sign? Yes, Ujian. Yes, you are. Okay, yes, sir. Perfect. perfect, okay. Uh, thank you. So as you can see, gain is dropping at that one over RC frequency. So here in this case, there is only one, but there are much bigger circuits. You will see another roll-off. You might see another roll-off. And there might be some cap in series, and this cap actually removes this part, and actually your transfer function maybe becomes like this, you know, and so on. So these caps define your transfer function, brings, brings poles and zeros. So the zeros and pole. And when we look at the, uh, this one is what's, it's FH, right? We are not even looking at F low right now. We are looking at uh, the, this part of the frequency response, you know, because this one is more like a FH. But when we have some external capacitances, which are big, uh, that will bring F low. And then uh, you will have, instead of this one, you, as I mentioned, you will have something like that, right? So um, when you have a zero, magnitude rises 20 dB per decade. When you hit a pole, the magnitude falls minus 20 dB per decade. For instance, uh, let's do a test and I will ask you which one is a pole and which one is a uh, zero. So here I start from zero frequency and this one, is this a zero or pole? Zero. It's a zero, right? Because magnitude rises with a slope of 20 dB per decade. It's increasing. So this one, is it a pole or zero? It's a pole. pole. It's a pole, right? Because magnitude dropped by minus 20 dB. Um, this one, just şey yaptım. Bir dakika. Uh, şöyle yapayım. Slope bu iken ben böyle yapmak yerine şöyle yap. Double this zero. one is double zero, right? Because instead of 20 dB, now we have 40 dB. So at this frequency, let's say this frequency is 100, we have a zero, but we have a square. Okay, We have two zeros there. Now, if I do this, and what is it? Double. Eren? Oh, okay. Okay. Is, uh, Eren, are you here? Eren is not here. He's looking at avalanche. <laughs> Mert? Efendim hocam? Şurada, <gülüyor> e, burada kalmıştık. Şuradaki nokta ne? Ee, hocam, vallahi bu konuda çalışamadım ama. Valla hiç çalışmasan, dersi dinlesen anlarsın zaten. Ya ben sizi çalışmaktan kurtarmaya çalışıyorum biraz da. Yani o kadar hani her şeyi yavaş yavaş ve bir daha üzerinden geçiyorum. Hani gerçekten derse katılıyorsanız muhtemelen çalışmaktan kendinizi bir açıdan kurtarmış oluyorsunuz. Neyse üzerinden geçmeyelim tekrar. Uh, okay, then uh, kime soralım? Uh, Tuğberk'e soralım. Burada mısın? Evet hocam buradayım. Şuradaki nokta ne? Şimdi 40 dB arttı. Sonra 40 dB tekrar düşecek değil mi? Hı hı. E, ne olur o zaman? Ha. Slope 40 dB artarken bir anda 40 dB tekrar düşürüyoruz. Ya Marx gibi bir şey diyeceğim. Tam bilmiyorum ama. Zero mu olur? Pol mu olur? Zero'da yükseliyor. Yani zero pol'da olur. düşüyor. Pol olur değil mi? Evet. E, bir Pol'da 20 dB düşüyormuş. 40 dB artarken 0 dB'ye düştü yükselmesi slobu. Yani 40 dB artarken bir anda 
o slope 0 db'ye düşerse 1 pol mu vardır? 2 pol mu vardır? Ee, buradan biri düşer. 2 pol vardır. 2 pol vardır değil mi? Dolayısıyla mesela şurası 1000 ise ne olacak? Şurası 1000 yazacağız. Gene square diyeceğiz. Okay. Şurası ne? Şimdi de düştü. 20 db ile düştü. Gene devam edebiliriz seninle. Bu sefer tam tersi. O değil 0 olacak. A, gene düşüyor ama. Yani magnitude'umuzun slope'u gene düştü. Artmıyor artık değil mi? Sıfırda <gülüyor> düşüyoruz. O zaman pol. Bir pol daha var. 20 evet. db düştü. Dolayısıyla şuraya bir pol daha ekledik. Burası ne olsun? 10 üzeri 3'tü. 10 üzeri 4 olsun. Dolayısıyla buraya da bir pol daha ekledik. Şöyle yapsam şurası ne olur? Yani düşmüyor da yükselmiyor da. Normalde Değil düşen mi? şeyi normalde düşen şeyi sıfıra çevirdik. Eksi 20 idi. Eksi 20 ile düşüyordu. Artık düşmüyor. Hangisi? O zaman zero. Zero. Değil mi? Burada da bir zero var. 10 üzeri 5'i buraya koyalım mesela. Tabi şurada da yükseldiği için burada da bir tane zero var. O da 1 plus, pardon 1 plus olmaz. S olur. Sıfırda çünkü. 1 ee, plus S mi olur? 1 plus. Tabi burası F low olduğu için. Neyse olay mantığını anladınız. Okay. Ee, quizdeki soruyu da bu mantıkla çözerseniz. Burada mesela sol taraf. F low, sağ taraf F high. Okay. Kendiniz mesela kağıda alın, rastgele bir şey çizin. Ee, hani rastgele bir e, grafik çizin. O grafikten body, body'nin transfer fonksiyonunu yazın mesela. Okay. Ee, Hocam. Burası A mid, burası A mid oluyor. Orta gain. Şurayı F low olarak yazacaksınız. F low'un şeyini biliyorsunuz. Nasıl yazacağımızı anlattık. Burası da F high olarak yazacaksınız. Evet. Yok şey diyecektim. Ortası A mid mi olacak diyecektim. O nasıl söyledi? Aynen, aynen. Ortası A mid. Da oradan... ha. Ha, ha. Ortası A mid. Sağ taraf F high. F high'ı bu şekilde yazıyoruz. F low'un karakteristiği de e, nasıldı? E, S artı omega'ydı. Şey, S artı rakamdı. Mesela S artı 1. Aşağısı da S artı işte 10 olsun. Okay. E, dolayısıyla iki tarafı da o formatı uydurduktan sonra işte HS'i o şekilde yazabilirsiniz. Uh, şimdi devam edelim. So, you know, we went through this in the quiz already. Uh, you know, this is here F low, here is F high. Okay. And after writing this one, actually we need to estimate the bandwidth. The bandwidth is this region. And we call this low cutoff frequency. And we call this part high cutoff frequency. And at these frequencies, your gain is what? A mid minus 3 dB, 3 dB frequency, right? 3 dB. A mid minus 3 dB is your gain. So here the gain is A mid, but at this part and at this part, your gain drops by 3 dB. So this is called 3 dB bandwidth. When somebody asks you, hey, what is the bandwidth, 3 dB bandwidth of your amplifier? You need to find omega L, you need to find omega H and subtract them from each other. Let's say this is 1 megahertz, this is 4 megahertz. So your 3 dB frequency, 3 dB bandwidth is 3 megahertz. Okay. Uh, and the, na, we explain how you can find this omega L and how you can find this omega H last two weeks, actually last week mostly. Um, before we go to that one, um, in last week we went through the transistor model. Normally you learned last uh, semester you learned the transistor models without these caps. But now that's why it's called high frequency model, right? Actually there are caps. If there were no caps, probably we would do the time travel. Okay, because there is no limit for energy. Caps are the bottleneck. Okay, and why? Because caps at high frequencies shorten, right? And this shorting means you are losing the signal. If if we apply a signal to a transistor and this signal is infinite frequency, can this transistor work? No, right? Because this transistor will have an input here at the base but this signal at infinite frequency will flow to the ground through this cap so we won't have any output here right if this cap wasn't there we would operate this transistor at infinite frequency and with infinite frequency we can probably design you know complicated ufo you know or you know like super super super computer that can make crazy calculations basically there wouldn't be any limit to anything um and that's why it's called high frequency model and that's why if you look at the uh, previous schematic here body plot these transistors actually define your high frequency 
FH, okay? Mostly because these caps are so small, and that means 1 over RCs are big, right? Those transistors, intrinsic transistors, define your FH mostly. And if you have an external capacitance that you put it there externally, you know, by through your design, you put it yourself, that defines mostly your FL. Okay, that defines mostly here. Um, so let's continue with the transistor models. If we go back to the, actually, let's go back. If we go to the CMOS and BGT, it's very similar. Between the base and collectors, we have CMU, and between base and emitters, we have CPI. And similarly for the MOSFETs, between gate and source, we have CGS, and between gate and drain, we have CGD. And for a MOSFET in saturation, this CGS capacitance is much bigger than CGD capacitance, uh, but still CGD in some cases are still big. Uh, but these are the values of that uh, of that cap. What is the GC? Well, it is uh, the it's technology dependent mostly CGC and CGSO, uh, and uh, this omega this W is fit of the transistor right there is width and length so i'll ask you a very basic question which one of these width or length define your technology which developing technology which one is getting smaller so this is the width of the transistors this is the length of the transistors length is getting smaller i guess yeah length is getting smaller right because this is where the electrons flow to the other side. And, you know, in your lab, I usually, I usually assign L as 180 nanometers, but, you know, with increasing technology right now, it's around 10 to 20 nanometers. Yeah. This means in digital circuits, you know, a faster digital logic. In uh, analog or high frequency design, that means you can design a uh, basically higher frequency instead of this you can design a higher frequency circuit okay uh, because with decreasing length also your cap size is getting smaller as well basically you can think it like a big box is getting smaller so correspondingly your cap will get smaller okay um, all right so uh, in correlation with what we just went through the speed of the transistors is defined by the unity gain frequency of the BJT or MOSFETs. So you just draw the new model. So RPI, CAP, CMU, the voltage control current source, RO, and this is your output, and you short the output to the ground. So what you do is you draw a transistor, you apply a signal, you short it to the ground. So this IB is applied here and this IC you measure, okay? This is how we characterize a transistor actually in the laboratory. You know, you design, like Intel designs a transistor. Basically, it goes through a bunch of manufacturing process. And after the manufacturing process, it goes to Taiwan, TSMC. TSMC manufactures this, uh, or in the clean room, maybe Intel does it itself, depends on where they work with. And in the lab, when they measure it, this is how they measure the speed of the transistor. Okay, the unity gain frequency defines the speed. And how it defines the speed is, basically they plot this. IC over IB defines your beta. And the beta is, you know, when they measure it, they come with a characteristic like this. And the reason they come with a characteristic like, like this is because there are caps here, the parasitic caps. Parasitic means we don't want it to be there, but it is there. We cannot get rid of it. So, and uh, as you can see, you know, this is a way to write the high frequency part of it. So, and when we rewrite it, we multiply both sides with omega b, and omega b is this basically cutoff frequency, and it becomes this omega t divided by s plus omega b. And the important part is what is omega b? Well, omega b is the RC time constant at this node, right? And uh, there is this R pi resistance with the equivalent uh, cap. We do a Miller here. And because the gain is zero, since this is zero here, this C mu comes here as C mu. So the cap here, equivalent cap becomes C pi plus C mu. Equivalent resistance is R pi. So we have a pole here at V beta, the omega beta. So, and we multiply this with 
beta 0 times omega beta. So we basically multiply this with beta. Beta divided by r pi becomes g pi. So g pi divided by c pi plus c mu defines your frequency where your gain goes to 1, right? Because we're looking at where this is 1. This is 1 when uh this uh v uh, this is one when this is uh this s becomes vt right so and long story short for a bjt the ft is gm since c mu is much smaller let's call it gm over c pi and for a cmos also gm over cgf okay and this one defines your unity gain frequency basically which frequency you don't get any more gain. Beta means output current divided by input current. Okay? IC over IB in this case. In this case, ID over IG. So at which frequency you don't have any more amplification. Okay? So this is 0 dB or in decimal it is 1. Right, And that is for a BJT, it's CM over C pi. For a CMOS, CM over CGS. Well, that's makes logic and it makes sense because with increasing technology c pi is going down and gm is going a little bit high so as you can see with increasing technology your bandwidth or your unity gain frequency uh, is going higher okay uh, similarly yours also uh, omega beta is also going higher right because the c is getting smaller so your bandwidth is going higher uh, with the body plot there is this trick the trick is this gain in decimal not db times whatever the bandwidth so for instance we are looking at this point the gain 40 db that means it is 10 to the power 2 right it's 20 log 10 to the power 2 is 40 so 10 to the power 2 gain times frequency fb will be equal to the gain here which is 1 times ft so if this fb for instance let's call it 5 times 10 to the power 6 so this becomes 5 times 10 to the power 8 this is how you can find the unity gain frequency if the bandwidth is given to you we found these points so gain times frequency equals gain times frequency at other point. This works only for 20 TB for decades function. Uh, all right, so as I explained that mid bands at high frequencies, the gain falls due to these internal capacitances of the transistors. Okay, those intrinsic C mu, C pi, it causes high frequency roll off and low frequency, gain falls due to the effects of coupling and bypass so if you have a bjt and if you put an external cap here you are creating a pole at this node and because of the pole actually you are also creating a zero as well uh, and that is causing your circuits uh, to have a pole so let's say you add another big cap here yourself a huge cap well this huge cap creates another pole Right, and because that pole is one over RC, this cap is big. That means this one over RC is small, right? So that's why you are at the smaller side of the frequency bands. So anything you add externally that is mostly big, you wouldn't ex ex usually add a small cap. Uh, then that uh, causes frequency drop at this side. Okay. All right, so last week we also went through something called dominant pole approximation. So sometimes your circuit, this, this is low side, FL, this pole is much, much bigger than rest of the poles and zeros. For instance, in this case, in this question, as you can see, we rewrite this and bring it in a form, A mid times FL, and this is the FL. And as you can see, thousands is much bigger than 10 or hundreds, at least 10 times more. So if we want to do a dominant pole approximation, basically we're saying that, hey, thousand is much bigger than hundreds, you know, or 10 or zero. So we can write this as S divided by S plus thousand. So instead of basically this, we can simply represent this with uh, S divided by with with this okay there is a pole here at s and there is a zero here at thousand 
I'm sorry, there is a zero here at S and there is a pole here at thousands. Okay, zero makes it go up, pole makes it smooth back to the zero dB. Well, this is dominant pole approximation, okay? And it can only be used if uh, the dominant pole is much bigger than the rest of the poles and zeros. Similarly, for the high frequency approximation, we can do the same logic. As you can see here, this pole is much smaller than other poles and zeros. So we can simply write our FH with one pole. Let's make a test. S goes to zero, one plus zero is one. One divided by one is one, right? So this FH goes to one when frequency is small. So that works. Similarly, you can test, make the test here. Make the frequency go high, high, high, divided by high, high, like one million, one million divided by one million, one million equals to one, okay? So that works too. Um, and as you can see, because this is much smaller, we do this dominant pole. And from this dominant pole, we're saying that, hey, we H, we, uh, H like high frequency, cutoff frequency, is using the dominant pole approximation, is 10 to the power six radian. We divide by two pi, if it's asking you the frequency, it's 159 kilohertz, okay? And similarly, if we do the low frequency dominant pole, you know, for instance, this one, uh, then, you know, we just saying that, hey, our uh, pole thousand is much bigger. So that is our pole and we divide by two pi, it's 159. Uh, but if we do a more exact calculation, for instance, this is now uh, called, if it's coming, it's so small for some reason. Uh, all right, so if we do the more, exact calculation if there is no dominant pole so let's assume these ones are somehow close to each other to find the lower cutoff frequency omega l uh, you gotta do the this formula so this formula this body plot is given to you you find the fl and from this fl you find the zeros you find the poles and then pole, first pole square, second pole square, minus two times first zero square, minus two times second zero square, square root gives you omega L, okay? So, and similarly, for the high frequency, you do the same logic. You write the F8, you find the zeros and poles, okay? Um, for instance, uh, this is, if there's a dominant pole, there is no dominant pole, you find the zeros and poles and you write them this way and then doing this equation you find you find the higher cutoff frequency so şunu sorabilirsiniz e hocam şurada bir pol var o pol higher cutoff frequency eşit olmuyor mu burada da bir pol var olmuyor zaten olmadığı için yapıyoruz şuradaki zerolar ve pollar eğer bunlar birbirine yakınsa şuradaki 3d bir noktasını değiştiriyor Değil mi? Mantıken değiştirir. Siz yakına bir yakın frekansa bir zero veya pol getirirseniz ne olur? E, oradaki gain'deki sonuçta gain'imiz bizim şu. Değil mi? Aşağıda, şurada. Orada yakına bir zero veya pol getirirseniz o frekanstaki gain değişecek. E, dolayısıyla bu poldaki gain'inize karşılık gelmeyecek. Hepsinin bir etkisi olacak. O etkiyi de işte low frekans için şurayla ölçüyoruz şu formülle high frekans tarafı için de bu formülle ölçüyoruz okay var mı sorusu olan okay um, o zaman devre tarafında da there is this thing called direct calculation so the hardest way to find the poles and zeros is to do the direct calculation for low frequency uh, if it's saying low frequency you don't even consider the parasitics of this transit as you can see it didn't even draw the caps here because it's saying hey find the low frequency poles and zeros right so the effects are due to these three caps and when we draw the small signal with this transistor model here and we do the nodal equations at this part and at this part using the Laplace. We get to write the output divided by input uh, V out over V in is equal to gain A mid times F lower frequency function. So gain becomes this and FL becomes this. Uh, 
I wouldn't probably asking you this in the exam because it's quite long to do this. But as you can see in the low frequency parts, we have two zeros at zero, one zero at one over RSC2, and one, two, and three poles due to the three caps, okay? And these zero locations and pole locations, as I mentioned, are here. Um, well, as I explained last week, does it make sense? It makes sense. Uh, and why does it make sense? Let's look at the circuit at zero frequency, at DC, right? At DC, as you can see, this FL, because DC here becomes zero and zero. There are two S's that make this go to zero, because S means J omega, right? So that means J omega times J omega is at the numerator. And if we plot this at DC, these J omegas means J0, J0. Two times we see the gain of zero. And because this is zero, this becomes entire gain becomes zero. Well, does it make sense? Let's look at the circuits. At DC, this cap is open. So a signal, DC signal doesn't go from here to here because this is open circuit, one over SC, right? Impedance is infinite. Well, same here. If we have a signal here, this DC, doesn't go here because the cap doesn't let it go through. Okay? So as you can see, two times due to the C1 and C3, we have two zeros. Okay, But these caps also cause a signal to drop. And as you can see, C1 and C3, it causes one pole here and it causes another pole here, as well as C2, it causes a pole here. So when frequency increases, these poles create gain to drop. For instance, you know, let's do it this way. The gain is increasing. One pole here, one pole here, right? So this will cause the gain to drop. You can ask me, hey, gain is not dropping here. Gain is getting fixed. Well, it is dropping because while it's increasing, it's going back to the zero dB, right? So that means a pole. So, or it might be like this, right? This is a pole. But usually if it is low frequency, you don't really get to see this much because this really corresponds sometimes, yeah, most of the time, the high frequency, right? Because if you look at the graph uh, in the previous slides, right? So, yeah, as you can see, mostly the poles at the low frequency are these ones. The poles at the high frequency are these ones. This is a zero. This is a zero. Okay. All right. So, well, I explained Miller theorem in the quiz, so I'm skipping this, but in summary, usually you have a C mu cap here, right? In the small signal transistor model, high frequency model. And the C mu cap, for instance, should be divided into two isolated nodes. So C mu will be written again at these nodes. And as you can see at this Z1 node, like first node, C mu gets multiplied with one plus gain. And at the second node, C mu gets multiplied with one plus one over gain. If the gain is big, that means C mu just comes here as C mu, doesn't change. And here it becomes C mu times one plus gain. Since gain is big, very big, it becomes C mu times A, okay, the gain. Burada da onun özetini yapmış. Son Miller teoremin dışında bir de geçen haftalarda short circuit time constant metodu diye bir şey öğrendik. Short circuit time constant metodunda da burada gene Miller teoremi demin verdiğim örnek var. Şu ortadaki cap iki tarafa şey yapıyor. Okay. So um, as you can see at the short circuit time constant methods uh, we have this estimation. So this is the short circuit time constant method. Diyor ki bize frequency estimate ederken cutoff frequency aslında bir devredeki RC'lere bakarız. Mesela burada bir common emitter amplifier. Uh, we have three poles. Okay. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be four. So three transistors will have three RCs. So one over RCs, we sum them up, right? And then if we divide it by two pi, we get the frequency for the cutoff. And why is it called short circuit time constant methods? Because when we are looking at the single cap, we are shorting the other caps. So let's do an example for that one, which we did actually last week, but let's redo it again. Um, and after that, we can take a, uh, sorry, seven, we can take a break until 4.15. Three capacitances, let's start with the first cap. Let's look at this, the cap is there. Let's, sh let's uh, short the other ones, this one and this one, okay? So let me go to the next slide. As you can see here, when we short this, this node becomes ground, okay? 
So when you short this, uh, we are looking at actually C2. I'm sorry. Uh, let's go back. C1 atlamışız galiba ya. C1, C2, C3. Okay. C1 atlamışız. C2 ve C3 için göstereyim. Uh, mesela C2'ya bakıyoruz. C2'yu açıyoruz. We open it. We short the other cap. Right? We short C3. We short C1. Bu not ne oluyor? RB'yi görüyor. R1'ı görüyor. Or RI, RI'yi görüyor. Uh, the independent vault source'ları öldürüyoruz. Voltage source short. Current source varsa open. Değil mi? RTV'nin gibi düşünebilirsin. Captain, we are looking RT. RTV'nin. So, as you can see, we have R3. And we have this equivalent impedance, which is RC parallel RIC. Okay? The impedance here. And this impedance is because this impedance is RO, is RC parallel RO, okay? So that one is called equivalence resistance for the second cap. If we look at the third cap, let's do it together with someone. Um, kim gelsin? Mesela Ege gelsin. Ege? Merhaba. Merhaba. İzleyebiliyor musun yoksa koptun mu? Tamam, koptum da biraz yani izliyorum ama koptum yani öyle söyleyeyim. Tamam, tamam. okay. Uh, kim gelsin? Sinan Kemal gelsin. Yapalım. Tamam, Kemal Eren'le yapalım. Uh, C3, let's do the C3. So what we do with this? Uh, we short it, we open it. No, we open it, we are looking at time constant for C3. So we open C3, black box, open it. We short the other ones, right? We short this, we short And this. C1. Yes. Hı hı. Gördüğünüz gibi bunu short ettik. Bu short olunca ne oluyor? Şurası ile şurası paralel oluyor. RC, R3, da paralel. Bunu short yaptığımızda ne oluyor? R1 ile R base şurada paralel oluyor. Gördüğünüz gibi. Sonra ne yapıyoruz? Sonra resistorlar. Sonra cap'in gördüğü rezistansa bakıyoruz şuradan. Değil mi? Equivalent resistance. Şurada ilk rezistans geliyor. R4. R4. R4 var. Sonra bir paralel equivalent bir rezistans var. Şu equivalent rezistansı bulmamız lazım. O equivalent rezistansı da bu şekilde buluyoruz. Bunu nasıl bulduk derseniz bunu şu transistörün T modelini çizerseniz şurası base, burası RE şurası şuradan bakıyoruz zaten. Sonra şurada da RTH var. Bu RTH'den geçen akım I base, buradan geçen akım I C. Aslında ne yapıyoruz? Buraya bir test voltajı koyup Buradaki akımı bulacağız değil mi? Burada R pi bölü beta olmasının nedeni R pi bölü beta is R e. Dolayısıyla şurada bir R e'yi görüyoruz zaten. R t'nin beta'ya bölünmesinin nedeni voltaj olarak <gülüyor> şurada R t çarpı I b'yi görüyoruz. Bu voltaj olarak test voltajına etki eden bir voltaj. Ama test karıntı I c. Dolayısıyla I b I c'ye böldüğümüz zaman etkisi aslında R t bölü beta oluyor. Baktığımız zaman oradaki rezistans. Bunu çizmeniz lazım. Böyle anlatmak kolay değil. <gülüyor> Dolayısıyla oradaki yani işin zorluğu burası zaten. Şu rezistansı bulmanız zor. Dolayısıyla e, bunu da small scene ile çizip e, biraz daha şurada RT olmasa mesela ne olacak? R pi over beta. Yani direkt R'i olacak sizin impedansınız değil mi? Çünkü şurası grant olsa mesela RT olmasa direkt R'i görürsünüz. Bu şey gibi bir transistöre şuradan baktığınız zaman mesela input'u burası output burası olan bir transistör olsun. Şurada da current source koyalım. If you look at output impedance you will be looking from here right? And this will be 1 over GM. 1 over GM de hem BJT hem MOS için. BJT için RI MOS için de zaten 1 over GM. Okay. Aa, dolayısıyla da ikisinin paraleli yaptık. Şununla şunun paraleli. O da zaten işte bu çıktı. Okay. Şimdi bunu C1 için de yapıyoruz. Burada ekle ha, burada eklemişim. İşte C1 için de burada. So R1S, R3S, R2S. We found all the equivalent resistances. After you find the equivalent resistances. RC, R'ları da bulduktan sonra yaptığınız şey aslında direkt şu estimation modeline koymak. Yani 1 bölü R'ları topluyorsunuz. 1 bölü RC'leri topluyorsunuz. 1 over R1 is C1. 1 over R2 is C2. 1 over R3 is C3. Uh, then, you know, to find the F, we divide by 2 pi. In the exam or in general, I don't really ask F. I usually ask omega anyways. So you don't really have to do this one. Okay? I usually ask you what is omega, angular frequency. So in that case, you wouldn't divide by 2 pi. If I ask you F, yeah, you would divide by 2 pi. Okay? So this is called 
uh, short circuit because we are shorting the caps to ignore their effects. Okay, and uh, this is called short circuit time constant methods. Uh, now this week we are looking at the open circuit time constant methods. Uh, let's take a five minute break. Uh, then I will explain that, and if we have time, we'll do some examples. Okay, with these uh, frequency response of different circuits. So open circuit time constant method. Gene enizde bir HS var. Uh, bu sefer uh, similar to the short circuit time constants. This time you will do this approximation, right? So in the previous one, we were doing what approximation? This approximation. We were dividing the R's, right? RC's, one over RC's. We were summing them up. This time, what we are doing is now we are summing the RC's, right? Because one over one over RC is R's. So we are summing the time constants, okay? So as you can see here, we are summing the time constants and then dividing the total by one over that. So, and why are we doing it different than the previous one? Because now we are finding we a high frequency cutoff frequency. Okay. Previously we were finding we low, and the difference from previous one as well is uh, what you do is this time use open circuit the cap. In the previous one, you were short circuiting it, right? So the procedure is one by one. You're looking at one cap. You open circuit all the other cap. Okay, all the small caps, okay? Not the big one. I'm talking about the parasitic caps, like the, the ones that belong to the transistor. Then you short circuit big caps, okay? And you do the killing, voltage sources short, current sources open, and uh, you just find the RT, basically equivalent resistance, similar to the one we did. You find that twin in resistance, then you multiply each other, R and C, and then you do the same for the seconds. You do the same for the third cap, okay? And uh, so let's do an example. So this is a simple circuit. And if you do the characteristic response, V0 over Vs, you know, if you do it, you will find it like this is the response. And if you simplify it, S squared has a B2 and S is, has a coefficient B1. And as you can see, uh, R1, C1, R2, C2, two time constants, multiplication, okay? So this is B2. And this one is uh, mostly, if you cancel this, assuming it's small, I think, this is R1 plus R2, which is B1. So, and now you'll see that uh, in the next slides where it is coming from, okay? how actually it works. So let's make the open circuit time constant method. Let's look at C1, short circuit, I'm sorry, open circuit, it's open circuit time constant, right? Open circuit, the other big cap, all the other big caps, open. So there is no cap here. And short circuits, the voltage source, basically kill the independent source. So looking at the, uh, so time constant C1, Looking at that circuit, you know, as you can see, we short circuit it, we open here, and we're looking at the equivalent impedance. So you can put a test circuit if it is hard, but this one is not hard, right? There is no current here, so there is basically no R2. So the only resistance you see is R1. So what would be the time coefficient? It would be R1 times will be C1, okay? And now let's look at this one, C2. Okay. Open circuit all the caps. Open circuit, as you can see. Kill the independent source. Voltage source short. If there was a current source, it would be open. Ne yapıyoruz? C2 ne oldu yere? Test source koyuyoruz. Veya direkt şuradan ne görüyoruz? RT ona bakıyoruz. R1, R2, right? Time C2. So this is the time constant 2. Ne yapıyorduk? Time constant 1 plus time constant 2 topluyorduk. Time constant 3 varsa onu da topluyoruz. Yok burada. 2 cap var. Ne yapıyorduk sonra? 1 bölü o yapıyorduk değil mi? So this will be your uh, approximation for the high frequency. So let's look at it. Now we found this. We found this. As you can see, we put it in the numbers. This is due to the first cap. This is due to the second cap. Okay. And... Uh, yeah, if you want to find the VH, burada göstermemiş. Basically, we are doing VP1, uh, or tau1, pardon, plus tau2. Formüle tekrar bakalım. Uh, tekrar dondu mu, ne oldu? Gördüğünüz gibi, şurası tau, time constant. 1 bölü tau1 
tau to size cut off frequency'nizi vereceğim. Okay. Bu formülleri zaten sınavda veririm. Dolayısıyla ezberlemenize gerek yok ama mantığı anlamanız açısından mesela şuradaki approximation'a geri gidelim. Neredeydi? Okay, this one. Mesela hatırlarsanız benzer mantık. Low frequency için ne yapıyoruz? Direkt topluyoruz. Biri bölüler yok değil mi? V pole plus V pole square plus V pole square uh, minus 2-0 square minus second 2-0 square. High frequency için ne yapıyoruz? Bu sefer biri bölü geliyor. Değil mi? Biri bölü VH. Uh, işte uh, square root. Biri bölü omega. Okay. Dolayısıyla burada şunları bilmeniz lazım. Burada aslında yap- burada niye aynısını uygulamıyoruz? Çünkü e, bu direkt bize aslında polları ve zeroların yerine şu boda platta birebir vermiyor. Ama bizim şuradaki RC estimate'de neredeyiz? Okay, bunda veya öbüründe bunda da olabilir. Mesela bu short circuit time constant. Burada low'da bir bölü R'ları topluyoruz. Yani bunlar aslında pol oluyor değil mi? Bir bölü R ne oluyor? Direkt VP1 topluyoruz. İşte ene kadar. Burada niye şey yapmıyoruz? Square root işte şunu yapmıyoruz. VP square minus 2 VN square. Çünkü bu bir approximation. Approximation da demiş ki burada diğerlerini short yapıyorsun ve buradaki node'daki efekti buluyorsun. Arkasında muhtemelen uzun bir teorem var. Ama approximation da böyle yaptığımız zaman bu teoremin sonucunda en yakın olarak cut-off frequency estimate edebiliyoruz diyor. Okay. Aynı şekilde bu lower cut-off frequency. Demin anlattığım gibi open circuit time constant method'da da burada da higher frequency bu şekilde buluyoruz. Mesela ikinci örneğe bakalım. So this is a common gate MOSFET amplifier. We have one cap here, one cap here and uh, also Uh, actually this cap is not external this cap is actually the cgs okay so this cgs cap because this is ground here we just wrote it as this way okay so to be explicit so this cap is actually this cap okay? because this node is this node and ground is ground here okay and similarly this cl is the cgd cap the so book cap da Buraya CL olarak yazmışız. Niye? Çünkü şu not aynı. Burası da ground. Dolayısıyla bunu şu şekilde gösterebiliyoruz. Okay? Çünkü aynı notlar. So now looking at this. Kaç tane time constant'ımız var bu circuit'ta? İki. İki değil mi? Bir buradan bir de buradan. Şimdi e, şurada da bir aral demiş. Aral de RO rezistansıyla gerçek aralin paraleli. Hemen bakalım ikinci slayda. Mesela open circuit time constant metodu yapalım. We first look at C in. Let's open the other ones, okay? And uh, circuit become this cap. We kill the independent circuit. Equivalent impedance is this impedance parallel this impedance. So the trick is finding this equivalent impedance here. And when you do the test methods, okay, when you do the test methods, you see that that impedance RO is actually divided by RO plus this impedance RL uh, is divided by... 1 plus GMRO, okay? So you, if you do a test method, you will find this equivalent impedance. And aslına bakarsanız mantıken neydi? Demin anlatmıştım. Şuradan baktığımız zaman bir transistöre, burası groundsa, bu rezistans bana o GM'e çok yakın oluş, değil mi? Şu RL'in küçük olduğunu düşünelim. Şu bir de küçük. ROLAR cancel oldu. Gördüğünüz gibi bana o GM'e çok yakın, okay? Um, Dolayısıyla bana o GM ile R signal in parallel, time C in, İlk time constant. Let's look at the second time constant. Now we do the... Uh, now, okay, niye geçmiyor? Okay, now we do the opposite. We look at the second cap. Let's open this. And what is the equivalent impedance seen from this cap? This impedance, parallel this impedance. RL, parallel. Now you know this impedance is RO times 1 plus GMRO. Okay? And uh, this, this RO, basically this impedance, This RS, basically here we put RS. Remember from current mirrors, that's how much we are multiplying the RO with, right? Now, if you remember whatever impedance here, it's RS. Looking the circuit from here, it would be RO times 1 over GM, this, okay? Anyway, so some of uh, parallel of those two impedances, uh, this one and this one will be RL parallel that 
and we multiply with the cap in function, that will be your time constant too. And then what we do, we sum those time constants, R1 plus R2, right? So we sum those time constants and we divide them. Actually, this, is, this means sum anyways. So, and when we sum them up, one and two, and we divide it by one, as you can see here, that give you your omega eight, okay? If you wanna find the F, we divide by two pi. So here, as you can see, the time constants, this one and this one, similar to the short circuit time constant methods, we are finding the RCs, okay? The only difference is the way that we are finding these RCs and the formula at the end. There are difference, okay? Um, all right, so let's continue. If I ask you what is the mid-band voltage gain? Well, mid-band voltage gain will be basically uh, just treat this like, because this is, we are looking at the high frequency. Well, just you'll find the gain you used to find it. The way that without any cap, you know, you were finding the gain of the circuit, right? That's exactly, that's how you are finding the gain. Because at zero frequency, this, this is where we are. So we just act like there was no cap. Same logic we used to do. The, you know, what we are learning different here is how we calculate this, you know, uh, cutoff frequency at the high region, high frequency. So last example, uh, in this example, it says a common drain. A common drain is we apply the signal to the gate and we get a signal at the source. Drain is common, right? It's not used. Um, burada da aynı logik. Bu da sizin evde bakmanız için buraya koydum. Okay? CG diye bakıyoruz. Diğerlerini açıyoruz. CGS'i ve CGL'i. Uh, ve bunu repeat ediyoruz. Üç kere. Üç transistör olduğu için. Uh, ve ondan sonra da tabii gördüğünüz gibi Equivalent resistance'ı bulmak için ne yapıyoruz? Burada test source'ları koymuş. Mesela e, hangisinde yapmış? CGS, CGD. Mesela CF. CL'e e, bakıyorum. CGS, CGD. CGD'ye bakıyoruz. CGS ve CD'yle open yapmış. CL'e bakıyor. CGD ile CGS'i open yapmış. Şimdi de CGS'e bakacak. Okay. Şimdi de CGS'e bakıyor mesela. CGD'ye open yapıyor. CL'e de open yapıyor. Buradaki signal bunu short yapıyor. Bununla şunun paraleli. Ama buradaki rezistansı bulmak e, muhtemelen mesela şuradaki rezistansı bulmak belki daha zor olacağı için bir yere test source koymuş mu? Yani kısacası equivalent rezistansı bulmak için bazen buraya örneklerdeki gibi test source koyup devreyi çizmeniz gerekiyor. V test böyle I test yapıp oradaki rezistansı bulmanız gerekiyor. Okay? Bazen hani direkt straight forward olmayabiliyor. Um, bakalım başka var mı örnek? Bu örnek devam ediyor. Okay. Üç tane time constant var. Üç tane kapasitanstan. Bunları topluyoruz. Sonra bir bölü yapıyoruz. FH'i buluyoruz. Burada da bir örnek var. Burada da common source stage with active load. Yani common source burası. Active load dediğimiz şey de şuradaki active transistor. Okay. Yani buradaki bu devrenin Frekans responsunu buluyoruz. Gene 3 tane pol demiş. Bir tane C in'den dolayı olan pol demiş. C in neresi? C in. C1, C out. Okay. Şuradaki noda C in demiş. Muhtemelen şuradaki bir noda bakalım. Evet şurada bir not var. Oradaki eşit kapasitansı C1 demiş. Output'daki noda da 3. not. Oradaki kepe de C L demiş. Dolayısıyla 3 tane nottan dolayı. Yani 3 tane fazla kapasitans var ama... O üç tane noda bakıyoruz değil mi? Önemli olan not, input not, middle not, which is called interstage not, and output not. Dolayısıyla there will be three caps at these three nodes. And there will be three equivalent uh, resistances for these three nodes using the open circuit method. Then we find three time constants. And then if we divide one over this, we find FH or omega H. Uh, okay, uh, bu kadar. Sorunuz varsa... Ee, sorabilirsiniz ee, e-mail ile Discord'da. Ee, saat 5 olmadan ben de bir hemen bir 10-15 dakika dışarı çıkacağım. O yüzden erken bitiriyorum. Ee, zaten diğer kısımda e, ikinci nodu da e, yükledim. İkinci kısım e, şey anlatıyor. Bu aslında example'larda verdiğim örnekler gibi e, nasıl e, farklı devrelere e, bu şekilde bulabilirsiniz. Mesela hemen göstereyim orada iki dakika daha açabilirsem. Farklı devrelerin example'ları var. İşte cascode olsun, degenerated, common source olsun vesaire. 
bunlara bir bakıp anlayabiliyor musunuz vesaire bakabilirsiniz. Okay. Week 12'nin içine birçok soru koyacağım. O soruları çözümleriyle beraber bakabilirsiniz. Anlayamadıklarınızı sorabilirsiniz. Okay. Any questions? Hocam benim bir sorum vardı şeyle ilgili. Tabii. Ödev yani ikinci opsiyon. Buradaki son soruda bu Open Circuit Time Concept metodunu mu kullanacağız? Evet. Yani şöyle hani sorunun ne sorduğuna bağlı olarak short circuit veya open circuit'u kullanabilirsin. Burada şey soruyor, mesela... high cut off frequency soruyor devrine. Aynen high, high cut off frequency soruyorsa open circuit metodu kullanabilirsiniz. Mesela şöyle bir şey çizelim. Şöyle bir amplifier'ın response olsun. Mesela bu response da ben size bu response'u verdim. Şunların transfer karakteristiğini de vermiş olabilirim, olmayabilirim. Devreyi de vermiş olabilirim. Devreyi verdim. Devreyi verdim. Az şey soracağım mesela. Bir şuradaki omega eli soracağım. Bir de şuradaki omega h'i soracağım. Hani tekrar söylüyorum. Bunlar pola karşılık gelmiyor. Estimate etmeniz gerekiyor. Dolayısıyla short circuit time constant metodu kullanarak şunu bulacaksın. We cut off high'ı soruyorsa da open circuit time constant metodu kullanarak bunu bulacaksın. Anladım hocam sağ olun. Hı hı. Burada şunun gibi tabii metod ile şurada güzel bir şekilde anlatmıştım metodolojiyi. Burada bunu tekrar bir bakarsınız. Bütün small cap, small cap derken parazitik cap'leri açıyorsunuz. Büyük cap varsa, mesela şöyle bir cap varsa, ben externally vermişsem bunu shortluyorsunuz. Okay? Çünkü bu parazitik cap değil. Bu external coupling cap or bypass cap or DC blocking cap. Ama... Paristik cap'ler, şuradaki cap'ler. Dolayısıyla şurayı anlarsanız short circuit için de böyle bir şey yazarım. Aslında gayet metot. Yani bol bol soru çözeceksiniz aslında.